Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever the fluff you are. Welcome to a quick sort of random ramble sort of kind of pseudo scrum news sort of thing or whatever it is going to be. Just more concerning just something that popped into my head the other day. I haven't had time to film it so if I do go off on a tangent sorry I can't help that. It's just something that cropped up especially um, considering certain things around certain places. So I'll just jump straight into it. Stadiums and stadium capacity sizes for the for British Rugby League or whatever. Um, some of the numbers that I'm going to quote to you may be a little bit off also as well. Um, Catalans and Toulouse aren't going to be included in the list that I'm going to look at because unfortunately the list that I found doesn't include them and I cannot find anywhere that puts a one on because there's most of it just shows up as estimates I think um, I think to lose is somewhere close to like 18 or 20,000 maybe that may be actually more like 15,000 same with um, Catalans I think there's like 14 and a half to possibly 16 I can't fully remember off the top of my head for their capacities but um, you know that's I'll see if I can find it in an edit and I'll put it in the down below if I can find it and if I can edit this thing quick enough and find the right stuff because I'm going to be a bit busy most of the day. Um, but for that, it's basically do you, the viewer, and you who goes to the stadium, the stadium attendee, do you feel that the stadium that you're in is big enough for your club? Obviously because there are going to be some clubs that could possibly get a bigger capacity than what they have. Since I'm in my Wigan shirt, um, let's jump straight in at that one. So with the DW, or whatever they're going to call it, by the by with the football, um, apparently the full attendance, or the unlimited capacity, that doesn't have any limits on anything else, is 25,133, which... To be honest, I don't know if that's ever really going to be there because there's always usually kind of some way of keeping a few fans apart and cornering judges and stuff. But it says apparently that the biggest attendance that we, uh, the rugby, has had in there is 25,011, which kind of, yeah. That was either a game against St. Helens or it was possibly a kind of um, World Challenge Cup final thing. Then the highest one for the Super League is the uh, KCOM or whatever it is for Hull FC at 25,400 so not too far away from D-Dub. And then the biggest one that it says on here which is used properly is also for uh, Bradford Bulls at 26 and 19. Now again some of these might be way off, but the reasoning for this video is because um, some of the stuff that I saw, especially because Walsh was listening in on the Listen Live to the last game, because I couldn't go because I do have massive hearing problems, um, is that basically after the game at Wakefield, which I believe is this week, this upcoming week, um, part of Bellevue stadium is going to be closed off and pulled down for refurb well, not refurbishment but for rebuilding that area basically to fully renovate and bring the place up to up to scratch and make the place now again take it with a, a pinch of salt i don't know if this bit that i'm going to say is actually uh, the correct number for what it is at this moment in time but it says that wakefield trinity wildcats bellevue stadium is at 9,333. Now, I have seen numbers banded about that it's more closer to 8,500 and that this renovation and rebuild of the stand is going to bring it up by another thousand or so back to the 9,000 and change closer to the 10k. Now, do you who is watching this, and you who goes, 
do you feel that the stadiums that you go to are big enough and clubs have been ambitious enough with it or is it about right for the level of rugby league in this country because I think I've covered this before on a couple of other uh, videos and a couple of other chats before do you feel really that maybe that one or two of these clubs are in stadiums which are a little bit too small for them that they could easily get three four extra thousand in every game or do you feel that they're about right or in some cases do you feel that they're in a stadium which is a bit too big now this is going to be the trade-off point between whether um, owning your own stadium is an advantage that comes with all of the day-to-day -day running costs your upkeep costs and all of your all of your regeneration and everything or the one where you grand share or rent from the football club or the union club or whatever or even the local council and community and stuff like that around you then you are the tenant in there you pay for the upkeep whereas the other teams and or the council and or the community company or whatever helps in that way so just the th just the theoreticals that i'm going to put out here with some of the things so for instance if you are a team let's just have a look for a team so if you're a team like the size of like rochdale or workington you know, or even Newcastle for the Thunder. You know, and you're in a stadium which is around ten thousand or so. And then you, just for instance, you have a rise, not massive rise, but you go from League One up into the Championship, and then after two or three seasons, you've got a good core of squad, and you've managed to push up, and then you get into the Super League, and then you become a mid-table Super League team. Well, you get that freak one season after let's say 10 seasons when you pushed up and you've managed to win a challenge cup which has pushed your attendances up so you're already close, close to max of your already attendance anyway so you've been getting temp stands in on an area which you've had space to add an extra area in so you've got an extra couple of hundred seats to a thousand seats there already just with a temp stand you then, on, a, on your way up to the top, you've then won the Super League. You've won it. So you've now won it. You've won that big trophy. You're then going up against in the World Club Challenge, because it's in this theory it's still around, because we don't know whether the World Club Challenge is actually going to be a thing anymore, because there's a lot of yap, yap, yap going on from certain corners and stuff like that which I am not going to cover because I'm not going to try and cover drama, but once I've found out more evidence, I might cover that. I don't know. But you've got that. And then you get told that your stadium isn't going to be the one that's chosen. So you have a football team in your town, which has a stadium capacity of in the mid-20s. So 20, call it like 24 to 28,000, something in that ballpark. So you ask the authorities if it's okay if you could swap that game over there rather than go over and play at a rival's stadium. And they say yes. And then you find your fans have turned out in droves. And then because you've been doing that, you've gone on and done that. You've even won that trophy. But you've won that trophy on the back of having the improved attendance. So you've gone from about a 10,000, 10, 11, 12,000 capacity to a 20, mid-20s, close-ish close, close -ish to 30,000. And your fans alone, on the back of you being in that stadium, has pushed you up and helped drive that. So you have then asked that football club if maybe once or twice, maybe every, what, what call it once a month, that you host a big game at their place. So then you host the games against the big teams at their place when you're at home. And because you're doing that, your attendances are being driven up. So then the question's coming along. Do we stick it out at our old place and totally redevelop it? 
and it's still not managed to get up to where the numbers are coming up because you're getting the low 20s in this ground share scenario but it back at yours your maximum capacity could only be about a 17 18 thousand is it worth that now i don't know the whole logistics of everything i don't know the numbers but i'm just going to just use a theoretical rounded out number here okay so just for instance every year that you have your own stadium now bearing in mind let's say it's a 50 60 year old place that hasn't had a lot of work done on it because it's not really been needed you've just done the bare minimum because that's all that's needed because it's been keeping everything bubbling up but over the time it's becoming less efficient to heat and light and power and everything else like that and plus it is getting old so the costs are going up so just for instance it's costing well again i'm just going to put this up there it's costing close to a million in total for all of the bills and everything per month so it's 12 million a year but you're getting in a lump which is about what 40 million but you've then got to factor in all of the other stuff on top of that because you that's just the staff wages for that that's not the player wages or the training well that's even including the training facility but that's not all of the overheads for the rest of the stuff but you're getting that in so you're then paying all of the other bits and pieces so all of the transport all of the player wages all of the all over stuff all of the stuff to do all of that your r and d for what your, your training you're working it out with your kit your kit guys to sort out the new colors and everything else and you've got your media team on top of that and then because you're paying out the extras let's say because you've got to put in for the stuff on top you're only coming out with an extra 10 but you get your sponsor money in but you're then handed a lifeline that says that that football club or whatever has turned around and said hey because you're doing so well and it's working out quite well for us so it's becoming a bit of a profit but we're not going to try and we're not going to screw you over would you be willing to jump to ours for four million bearing in mind that you're getting double your annual turnover in tickets is it worth sticking out at your own place over going to another place and getting the bigger money especially working it out that just again for instance that state that new football state that football stadium is only about five or ten years old so it's been through all of the rebuild costs so get your rebuild costs over it's going to cost closer to 50 60 70 million or if you really want to push the boat out 100 and odd million just as an, on a basic and then if you want it to look really nice and you want all of the extra structures in there it's going to be closer to 200 300 million especially to get all of the really good stuff to get all of the, the really plush seats and everything and the good lighting package and everything it's not going to work out specifically good on the pocket for the other stuff but to the diehard fans you might be selling out going to the old place but it's all there going back to where i was all working from is i can't remember much of the old stadium for wigan i can't remember much for central park because i only went when i was a kid all i know for me is the dw which feels sterile sometimes but you know it's there but the attendance is 13 14 15 16 on a good day the rest of the time it's like 10 11 maybe even 12,000 sometimes dipping below 10 now I understand that sometimes that is on a soaking wet absolutely disgusting freezing Thursday night after you've just done a killing ass you know you just absolutely wiped yourself out at work on a mass shift you might not want to turn up like that and the ticket prices and your travel and all of that like I've covered all of those before but I mean there is the timing of the games also doesn't really help with with that but for some teams that have old stadiums that really to be honest even the team owners and the, the players and the fans even sometimes do say that really we should have upgraded the place a couple of years ago we should have pushed on is is having a bigger stadium 
that is shared with another entity a bonus or a burden same with having your own stadium is it the anchor that ties around you or is it a bonus because it's your place you're not having to do anything around other people but with your place comes your own solo bills because at the other place you've already got the ground staff employed by whoever the so whoever the original owner is so you've already got all of those costs that you don't need to bother about you don't need to worry about it so much the ground staff you might need to bring in some of your specialized ground staff into their team just so that they know how to be able to prep the posts properly be able to actually prep the markings out the areas of the stadium that might need a little bit of work you know it's like having maybe if there was an area of that stadium where there wasn't much being done with it and that they that the owners of that stadium said oh well if you're going to do that we can build we can sort you out your own specialized room so your own let's say on-site treatment room your own locker rooms you could have that in that facility or do you stick to what you've got and stick to your old traditions and have it there now i'm not biased either way because i can't remember the old place but looking at some of it sometimes the older places do have that emphasis on it but then taking our game and looking at it from the australian side yeah league is massive over in australia so we have a bit of a disadvantage on that side because it's not all that big, it's not really all that massively televised and the TV deals and the money is minuscule in comparison to over in Australia. Same with their wage cap. They could do close to three, almost three times, maybe more three, more than three times what we can in the wage cap. But there is that crossover where it matches. It, there's pluses and minuses to each of them, but their stadiums... A lot of their stadiums are about 20-ish thousand minimum and then it jumps up to 30, 40s. You know, it's for them the game is a lot bigger than it is here. For them it's like what football is for us. So is having the old places the bonus or the bust? Same with having the new places, is that the bonus or the bust? Or is it the bust or the bonus? Whichever way you see it is whichever way you see it. But do you think or feel that teams should be more ambitious and the people running the game should be more ambitious and looking at it and thinking, yeah, well, we've got some of these old stadiums, but some of these teams are getting close to their capacities. Maybe we should work it out where they can have an extra X thousand into their facility all the time. Maybe that team that's there and there because there's two teams in this town maybe the football team and the rugby team could share it just thinking on that side because sometimes it does work out better i know there's a lot of people that do say it is unfair because when you've got one stadium which is being used so low for two games that you, know, you do have the problems which you do get a month and a half two month stretch where you are away from home a lot of the time because the pitch is being relayed that is the downside that is one downside but then you get an upside of where you then get back to back two or three games at home so you do get a home a block a home block where everything is there but then having the french teams sometimes you do have your, your double headers you do go out there you do have your back to backs out in France and they have their back to backs over here sometimes just depends on how the timing of the schedule is same with if there was teams up in Scotland or there was teams to rise up the ranks from Wales and things like that it's just one of those little micro things that sometimes when you look at the the highlights or you've been to it and you look at the place and you go yeah this is packed out I wonder how many more people could have fit in here and then you see it on the comments and with the fan forums and things like that where they're saying you know because of these games we could we could get an extra three four five thousand people in here 
is there nothing going on with this? You've said that we that you're looking at redeveloping the stadium or you're looking at a possible new site, but it's gone quiet. What's going on? Things like that, especially in towns and areas where there isn't that much space left for a new facility, where you may have that hang up of, do we just redevelop what we've got to be the best that we've got? Or do we go across, basically go across the road and knock on the door and say, hey, mister, can we share your place? There's also that rumour, which I don't know how much of a solid rumour it is, that Salford could be moving from their ground to the football ground for the um, Salford City FC. You know, going from what is essentially kind of, you know, going from what is a 12,000 seat arena, well, 12,000 capacity arena, not seat arena, but capacity, to what could possibly be a five and a half to 6,000 capacity stadium. Again, I don't know the ins and outs of that. That's something that I've got to investigate, but... There's a few bits and pieces going on with that. It's same with some of the other stuff, which was some of the chat that was going on around Cass. At Castleford were looking at redeveloping the jungle and making that place go from a near 12,000, from what it says on the stat that I've got in front of me on Wiki, to around a 14, 15,000 seat, maybe stretching to 17 and a half. Where do you think the, the midpoint for it is? Do you think really that we should be having more of a base of close to 15,000 for a lot of the stadiums than rising to a 20,000 for some of the tops? Because just looking at it this way, it's like, you know, for Warrington, it's 15 and 2. St. Helens is 18,000. Headingley, just over 21. Huddersfield, 24 and a half. Again, Wigan. 25 and change Hull FC 25 and change Oddsall for Bradford 26 and change and then even going across the other side of Hull for you know for the Robins it's like 12,000 12, so again that's you know a, de a decent size is is having these lower mid teens about the level of where, where the game is or is or is the, the air somewhere and some of these teams could push up an extra three or four thousand and jump from a low teens to a high mid are some of the teams stymieing themselves by holding back at a lower level and then where really they could have a week on week support of about twenty thousand is it possible that the game has missed a step? Is it possible that some of these clubs could have missed the boat where they could have improved their places about five or ten years ago and that they've missed out on the shot of challenging for challenging your St. Helens, your Wiggins, your Warringtons, your Leeds, your Bradfords for the historics, making the Challenge Cup finals a lot more? making it into the playoffs, making it into the run for the run for the cup. Even one one or two outside chances of picking up a League Leader Shield. I know some people out there say that the League Leader Shield is absolute park, but it's still a trophy to lift. It's still something to go, hey guys look, we've won this, we've got a piece of silverware this year. To some fans it might just be a bit of hollow just to go, Yay, we were number one at the end but we might not actually win it. You know, but You've got something, it's down on the papers, it's down in the history books. Having it in the history books sometimes can be better than nothing. I am rambling on, my throat is really red raw right now. Um, and I have to get busy with a few other things. So I will leave you with that question to ponder. Is having your own place better than sharing the ground, which could be a higher quality and higher capacity? But having your own place, you then have your own thing. Also, did the people running the game miss a step by not 
putting this question forward to other teams and saying, hey, we might help you get a better place. Also, did some of the teams miss out on that by not thinking for themselves as well at the time? I know we've come out from like 2007, 2008 where money was tight and we're running into an area now where money's getting a little bit tight. But theoretically, did they miss out? Anyway, I have rambled on for long enough. That has been me, uh, <laughs> Foxstar3087, signing out. Peace.